you know, these were stories that I grew up hearing, half listening to, the way kids do. And my husband, who was from Maine, didn't believe it. It's like, you're telling me that these women, black women in particular, part of this group of women, were intensely involved in the early days of the space program. I've never heard this story before, and why is that? I didn't know why NASA in the state of Virginia, which was a Jim Crow state, why would they have employed black women as mathematicians? And what I really wanted to do was to get back all the way to the beginning of the story. The conventional wisdom is that women are not good at math. Of course, I knew that wasn't true because I knew these women. But why, back in the old days, would they have hired so many women? Katherine Johnson is probably the best known, not just of the black women. I think at this point, she is sort of the emblem of women in computing. There was a research report that really laid out all of the equations and all of the math for the orbital flight of John Glenn, which happened in 1962. And that was a credited report. He made it possible, really, by insisting with their boss that she get credited on this research report because she had done most of the work. The thing that I think I really took away from this that was very powerful was that this was not an exception that these women were in these positions. This was the rule. You know, if there was a computing job, most likely there was a woman doing that job. I think really recovering that history and understanding how important and how successful these women were over time in these technical roles in these, these jobs really helps us to have a more nuanced look, perhaps a more open understanding about what might be the future of science and technology.